How does Digital Performer handle virtual instruments when there are multiple sequence chunks in a single session file? The answer is VRACs. Let's see how a VRAC is used to host virtual instruments and a master fader for multiple sequences in a DP session file. Right now this DP session file contains four separate sequence chunks. Each sequence has its own tracks layout. These are MIDI tracks, and to make those tracks produce sound, we need a MIDI sound module. So for the first sequence, I'll go to the Project menu and choose Add Track, and I'll select a Motu Mach 5.3 sampler for the virtual instrument. Here's the Mach 5.3 virtual instrument. For the first sound, I'll open the Mach 5 browser and go and find a piano to load. You can see that Mach 5.3 loads the samples for this instrument. I'll choose the second preset and add in a bass instrument. You see the samples load for the bass. For the third sound, I'll add in a drum set, and those samples also load. For the fourth instrument, I'll load in a jazz guitar. So now I've loaded in four instruments, which are assigned to separate incoming MIDI channels. I'll go back into the sequence and assign the MIDI track outputs to the separate MIDI channel inputs of the Mach 5.3 virtual instrument. The piano track is assigned to MIDI channel 1, the bass to channel 2, the drums are assigned to channel 3, and the guitar is assigned to MIDI channel 4. When I press play in the sequence, you hear the sounds being triggered from the Mach 5.3 virtual instrument. But now if I enable the second sequence chunk, there is no instrument track, and this sequence doesn't make any sound when I press play. I'll go back to the first sequence, but now what happens is that Mach 5.3 has to reload all its samples. This means that if I have sample-based instruments in each of these sequence chunks, I have to unload and load all the samples for the instruments each time I enable a different sequence. That's not a very efficient way to work. So what I'm going to do is select the Mach 5 instrument track in the original sequence. I'll right click on that track to get a menu that allows me to move the instrument track to a V-Rack. The instrument track is now deleted from the sequence and recreated in a new V-Rack. You can see that in the chunks window, a new V-Rack has now been created. You saw the samples reload into the Mach 5 instrument that is now inside the V-Rack. It's also possible to create a new V-Rack from the Chunks window mini menu. The MIDI tracks in the sequence are still assigned to Mach 5, but the Mach 5 instrument has now been moved to the new V-Rack. If I double-click on the V-Rack in the Chunks window, the V-Rack opens to display a mixer with a new instrument track. If I play the sequence, I hear Mach 5 playing from the V-Rack. Now I'll enable the next sequence, and I'm going to assign the MIDI tracks to the Mach 5 instrument that's in the V-Rack. Only one sequence chunk can be play-enabled at a time, but a V-Rack is always available to any play-enabled sequence chunk. This allows me to have a common set of virtual instruments that are available for all the sequences in a single DP session file. I've assigned the MIDI tracks in the third sequence to the Mach 5 in the V-Rack. Now each sequence plays and triggers the same set of instruments. Notice that as I switch between these sequences, Mach 5 does not have to unload and reload samples. The V-Rack instruments are ready and waiting for each play-enabled sequence. We can also use V-Racks for things like aux tracks and master faders. For example, I'll open the V-Rack and add a master fader track from the project menu. This master fader is now common to all the sequence chunks. Okay, now let's get fancy. I'll open the Mach 5 instrument, and I'm going to assign the audio output of the piano instrument to an aux output. Besides the main stereo output, Mach 5 provides 16 stereo aux outputs for separate audio routing. We'll go back into the first sequence and show the tracks window. I'll add in a stereo audio track. For the input of the stereo audio track, I'll choose the aux return from Mach 5. That routes the piano into this new audio track in the sequence. I'll enable input monitoring and record functions for the track, and I'll rename the track. Now I'll switch over to the mixer. I can display the sequence tracks as well as the V-Rack tracks. 
I'll press play and you can see the MIDI tracks playing as well as the audio return from the Mach 5 instrument. The piano sound has now been separated out from the drums, bass and guitar and it's being returned into an audio track in the sequence. This allows me to record the piano sound into its own audio track. This is a quick way to render audio output from a V-Rack into the sequence. So what the V-Rack provides is a common set of instruments, aux tracks, and master faders for all the sequences inside a single DP session file. I can switch between the sequences quickly, and the V-Rack is always active. V-Racks are an efficient way to use common effects and instruments for multiple sequences inside a DP session file.